way. So this was taken when he was uh, you know, 12 months old. Uh, he had just started to walk. He could barely speak a few words. But then he knew exactly how to unlock my iPad and pull up his favorite video on YouTube. And he had that all figured out in his uh, small little head. Now, at 12 months old, you know, so much into these uh, you know, gadgets and devices that uh, you know, when I would show him a physical book, an actual book with some animal pictures on it, he would try and swipe on it to move on to the next page. <laughs> right? So that tells us something. You know, we live in a technology-saturated world, a world in which all of us, you know, people from all ages, all walks of life, uh, encounter technology in some way or the other during our daily lives. So technology is everywhere, you know, entwined into almost every part of our culture, right? So uh, it affects how we live, work, play, and most importantly, how we learn, right? So the next generation, like my son, is born into this world, into the digital world, right? A world that is lightning fast, with instant access to information on their fingertips, right? So a world of uh, internet, virtual reality, augmented reality, video games, smartphones, and whatnot. So they are clearly citizens of the digital world. They are what we call the digital natives. So over the last couple of years, uh, my team and I have been closely studying the learning habits of uh, these digital natives. And no surprises here. So digital natives uh, consume and process information very differently. Basically, they, they have you know, uh, developed a unique uh, you know, style of learning, different problem-solving strategies. Now, basically, they think, work, and, uh, and process information in a very different way from the rest of us. So, first of all, they have a very short attention span. The attention span for NAT, six to eight minutes. It's very uh, you know, natural for uh, you know, a youngster, a digital native, to keep switching between apps and, and screens every few seconds. That's very common. So they prefer short, bite-sized content, content that is crisp, short, to the point. The content very similar to uh, what we see on social media, short, crisp, and precise, and to the point, that doesn't beat around the bush. They look up and access content very differently. Quick accesses, uh, uh, quick lookups on the internet, uh, buzzing friends on social media. Now, we all do that. We all look up information on the internet today, uh, but they do it more often than anyone else. And they're very good at it. They, they're very quick. Uh, they have. Uh, master the art of uh, multitasking. Huh? So they prefer uh, you know, uh, rich, engaging multimedia content. They have an unwavering preference for uh, uh, rich content, you know, content like videos, animation, uh, the podcasts. They are very popular amongst youngsters. And most importantly, they love to learn on the go, right? anytime, anywhere. Uh, you know, traveling on the bus, waiting at the doctor's clinic, and, and most often on the toilet seats in the morning. Now, uh, so you are one of them. You are a digital native, uh, someone whose world is inundated with uh, you know, devices, technology, and gadgets. And uh, you walk into a classroom that looks like this. Right? So a crowded classroom, a tight atmosphere, you know, closely packed desks, uh, fingers on uh, lips, all eyes on the blackboard, uh, with an instructor uh, standing next to it, delivering what would most probably be a monologue of some sort. You're not allowed to carry your devices into the classroom. You're cut out from the internet. Essentially, you are walking into an environment that is not natural to you. Right? An environment that uh, you know, limits your natural instincts and behavior. A whole new world that feels so ancient. So, let's, let's pause here for a moment. It's very important for us to uh, understand this and accept this. Right? Open our minds. To, to adopt more and more technology into our education systems. Uh, we have to work towards creating an environment you know, that, that best suits uh, the, the current generation and next generation learners, that resonates uh, with, with the next generation learners. The best part is it's already happening. So let's start with the classrooms. The classrooms of today and the next generation uh, should, should no longer be just a location or a room that students would dread to walk into or yearn to walk out of. Uh, it should be an experience, an experience that is rich, interactive, engaging, and most importantly, fun, that students would love to be part of. Now, classrooms around the world are, are uh, now seeing some dramatic changes. Now, uh, these are pictures from uh, a smart classroom that I recently visited. You can see uh, the traditional blackboards are being complemented with uh, touch screen smart boards you know, that instructors and students can, uh, can uh, know, interact with. More and more multimedia is making its way into the classroom. The classroom layouts are changing, uh, promoting interpersonal skills among students. 
more schools and colleges are adopting Wi-Fi, you know, providing Wi-Fi facilities across their uh, campuses. Above a certain age, students are allowed to carry their personal devices into the class. Right? And uh, now all these fancy uh, technologies like 3D printers, virtual reality headsets, uh, virtual science uh, experiences are making their way into mainstream uh, schooling systems. Now, when I was a kid, uh, we could not have imagined any of, uh, anything like this uh, being part of our uh, classroom or, or school. Uh, it's happening, it's, it's becoming reality today. Now, learning does not just happen inside the classroom. A lot of learning happens outside the classroom, mostly online, watching videos, uh, playing video games, reading articles, interacting with friends on social media. Now, we all do that, we all watch videos online. Uh, you know, pro we probably even uh, take courses online, and we have been doing that for quite some time now. So what's new? Now, over the past uh, three to five years, you know, something very interesting has happened. You know, this magic device called the smartphone. A quick show of hands uh, in the room. Now, how many of us here do not carry a smartphone of any sort? None. So, so if I were to ask the same question, uh, say three to five uh, years back, I would probably, uh, I would have uh, flipped it. I would have asked how many of us here do carry uh, a smartphone with an active internet connection, and the results would have been similar. Maybe one or two uh, know, rich kids would have uh, uh, lifted their hands. Uh, the smartphone here is, uh, you know, has created a huge paradigm shift in the way we communicate with each other, and the way we consume digital content, right? So this here is a very personal device. Uh, it lives in my pocket for most part of my day. I, I literally uh, eat, breathe, and sleep with my smartphone. Uh, trust me, I do. You know, it's, an, it's an integral part of me. You, can, you can't just separate my smartphone from, uh, from me. If you take it out from me, I'll be disconnected from the world. Right? Today, if I have a question in mind, uh, if, I have, uh, if I want to learn about something, I don't run to the nearby library looking for a book for answers. Right? I don't run to my desk uh, to find my computer. All I do is just reach out to my pocket, pull out uh, my smartphone, and start swiping. Right? I don't even have to type the question, I can just use my voice to get answers. Right? The best part is I can do it anywhere, anytime, on the go, at my convenience. Now, this is a very powerful you know, digital channel that connects each and every one of us to the world of internet. Okay? Today, this channel is only used for fun and entertainment. Now, this channel needs to be used for education and learning. Right? We, are, we are already seeing this happen. Imagine uh, you want to teach your kids or your students a concept. Uh, imagine if you break it down into uh, you know, smaller, a series of smaller chunks and make it accessible on their smartphone in the form of rich multimedia. You know, short, crisp, three-minute videos, podcasts that's, that kids today you know, love to listen to, animations that you can interact with using your fingers. The best part of the smartphone is you, is you use your fingers to interact with content, which is very natural. As against on a computer, you're using a mouse. Here you're actually using your uh, you know, fingers to interact with content. Right? That's the most natural way of interacting with uh, digital content. Now, rich uh, 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 narratives with in infographics and, and pictures and quizzes most of, you know, uh, to, to keep uh, users engaged. You know? A monotonous uh, learning experience is always boring. Now, if you keep pushing quizzes, uh, infographics, you know, and keep users engaged, they would love it. Students would love this. Right? So we're already seeing a lot of innovation happening in this area. More and more uh, you know, smartphone-based education uh, products are making their way into the market. The Baijus and, uh, uh, and uh, 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 the Woods for kids, you know, uh, uh, all these uh, uh, companies are exclusively focused on uh, smartphone-based education for the world. And this is only going to grow. We are going to only see more and more innovation happen in this area. Now, the biggest drawback of conventional education Right, the traditional education is the lack of personalization. Imagine a class of 60 students. Every single student in the class is different. Every individual is unique. Uh, students come with different backgrounds, they come with different abilities. Some are quick in understanding a concept, some are slow and need additional help, additional time, additional resources to understand the same concept. Now, basically, you know, students come with all different uh, strengths and weaknesses. In the traditional education system, it is almost impractical for an instructor to give personal attention to each and every student right, uh, on, the, you know, on, on a daily basis. So what do we do? Simple. We treat all the students the same. 
the same set of lectures, homeworks, assignments are forced down the throat of every single student, irrespective of their needs, irrespective of their progress or performance. Now, this is how the conventional education system works. There is one fixed, rigid learning path. Same set of chapters, the same set of tests, homeworks and assignments. Every student is forced to navigate through the same path. That's a big problem. Now, technology can help us solve this problem. Technology can bring, bring in the flexibility needed to carve out personalized learning paths for each and every student. Right? Now, learning platforms today are growing more and more smart to capture you know, details about each and every student, each and every learner, and craft personalized learning paths accordingly. If I am struggling with a concept, right, the platform knows that. It can push additional videos to me onto my device. It can push additional practice exercises to me onto my device. Basically, it's creating a, you know, a personalized learning path that I am comfortable with. Right? Likewise, every single student in the class would navigate through their own personalized learning path. Now, how powerful is that? Right? So we see personalization everywhere in the digital world. Now, when we browse through the internet, we get personalized ads. When we, when we you know, get onto social media, we get personalized news feeds. Uh, we get personalized recommendations on what to shop, what not to shop online. Why not learning? So eventually, personalization is going to make its way into mainstream learning, and technology is going to play a very important role in making that happen. Finally, you know, we have spoken a lot about technology and, and the role. Uh, typically, uh, when, I, when I speak about uh, uh, bringing in technology into the classroom, and when I'm in a college or in, a, in an education setting, I get a bad stare from all the teachers and educators. Now they think you know, I'm going to get them fired, right? because they're, you know, I'm reducing their job. No, that's not the case. Technology is only a means to an end. It's an enabler. The real magic still lies in the hands of educators and instructors. Right? It is very important for us to understand this. It's, I know, as, as educators and instructors, it is very important for us to work towards creating an environment that suits the learner and not me. So most, most of the educators, most of the instructors uh, today uh, uh, are, are not digital natives. And we have adopted technology. We were not born into a technology-rich world. So, and we have gone through the conventional education system. So we are comfortable with the conventional education system. So naturally, we try to push the conventional education system on, on, our, on the next generation as well. So that's wrong. It's never going to work. It's important for us to create an environment that works for them, and not an environment that we are comfortable with. Right? Uh, finally, uh, you know, but the goal here is, is uh, you know, to enable the learner in all of us to remember to remember and to uh, forget to forget. How well we do it is completely in our hands. Thank you.